Tell you what, after that long trip, I would like to have a nap just like this guy right here. Oh, where am I? I'm here at the Reptarian in Michigan. Make sure you check out what's going on. You gotta take a sniff in here, Peter. Sniff. So I had a sniff there. earlier. Did you have a sniff earlier? Yeah, we, we it's cleaned. wild, right? Smells like pancakes. Mmm, smells delicious. Look at that tongue. Look, Look at that tongue. Look at the size of that head. He's gonna come and say hello. You gonna come over here, bud? You come over? They're so he's so friendly. He's such a good animal, but he's so comfortable right now under that UV light. He's just like, oh, I'll just hang out here. Now his basking light's on the other side. He might come over and say hi. You gonna come out, bud? Come on out. Come say hi. Once again. Come on, bud. Come say hi. You wanna come down? You're like, oh, it's such a long way down though. You can do it, big fella. Oh, there you go, buddy. And this is the largest of the rock monitors in Africa. Of course, the black-throated monitor. Hey, buddy. Thank you for coming down and saying hi to me. Thank you, buddy. You're such a good boy. Look at this guy. Look at that. Look at that tongue. Absolutely wonderful animal, isn't it? He's amazing. Look at those scales on the back there. The keratin lumps all through there. Such highly textured animals. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Love them. I mean, I tell you what, that's a, and many of these animals here, you know, were really dreams of mine, right? I mean, like when I just bred snakes, these were unattainable to me because I just worked with snakes. Now I can work with all these amazing, you know, lizards and frogs and everything else. Of course, this is a Cook's Ooh. tree bar or a Amazon tree bar. This is what they call a tiger phase, and uh, that's got the striping in it. It's actually an incomplete dominant trait. And uh, of course, these guys are from the Amazon. And uh, beautiful snakes, love them to death. We've got, oh, we've got something that you might see from time to time. I highly doubt it. <laughs> Find yeah. this in your backyard. Backyard invader right there. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so we got a pair of diamond pythons. This is actually the boy here. The female will come over eventually. We'll give a go at breeding them a little bit. Beautiful. So yeah, that's one of those guys. And of course we have right uh, over here, we have Another one of your animals, the albino Darwin's carpet python. Oh, yes. There he is, that beauty. To us, it's a big deal. <laughs> it's a beautiful. To us, well, to me, it's still a big deal. I mean, yeah. this, this snake basically is the image that created the hobby yeah. for us in Australia. This yeah. is what sort of made it explode. Yeah. The albino carpet python yeah. made, it, made it a reality that we could breed some really cool color pigmentated animals. And it, this it. animal changed the hobby for us. Isn't it amazing? And I remember when that all happened. And of course, remember when it, they first came into our country and now are, are relatively, you know, I wouldn't say common, but you can certainly get them. And, uh, but just really, really cool. And it's a privilege to be working with them. That's for sure, I love them. Of course, we have some two-headed turtles here. We have three of them actually. One, two, three, two-headed turtles. These are red-eared sliders. <laughs> On the top here, we've got chopsticks. And then the two in the water there are other two. And we got a little uh, albino, what they call caramel. Uh, that's really cool. This is a neat little animal here. Oh, this is actually a false water cobra. Yep. So another rear fang venomous snake, but this one's very, very docile. And these are a large colubrid snake as well. You know, these can get eight, nine foot long. Really beautiful. I was about to say, I've seen these big. They yep. get big. Big, yep. And false cobra, well, they do act like cobras. They will sort of puff yeah, that neck out a bit. Yeah, they'll puff that neck out. They'll, they'll bluff you like a cobra. Uh, they're very interesting animals, but I love them. This, we got this as a baby baby. It's about a year old now. And we're working with it so that it is so docile that we can keep, you know, having people. Again, one of your Australian frillies here. Yeah. We've got New, New Guinea and Indonesia, but this is the Australian frilly here. This is what we call Billy the frilly. The only Australian one we have. We'd love to get a female, but you know the Australian ones are very hard to get here compared to the Indonesian. Then we have a series of chameleons here. Uh, we've got panthers. We've got carpets, and they're always hiding in here, a little hard to see. We've got a a uh, um, a beautiful Madagascan tree boa here. These are another species that I absolutely have always loved and feel so blessed to be able to work with. This is what they call Sanzinia madagascarinensis. And this is what they call the Mandarin phase, which is the West uh, Madagascan range. 
So these guys stay this color. The East actually turn green as they get older. They go through a oxygenic color change. These guys actually stay the same, uh, which is really cool. So they get much bigger than this, bro? They do. They'll get like six, seven foot. Yeah, you know, about, a lot about this, big, body yeah, too, about yeah? this big around. Yeah. So really beautiful. But again, a tree snake. I, so I, I think we actually seen some of these at Warren's place in um, South Africa. Oh, did correct? he have yeah. some? Okay, I think cool. So. He very well may. I can't re recall. I, I wouldn't be surprised. He had some amazing stuff for sure. Uh, it happens when you travel and you see a lot of stuff. Sometimes yeah, your brain like, yeah, gets yeah, overwhelmed. Yeah. Then, of course, we have our big boys and girls Woo. here. This is one of my big girls. I think you had the pleasure of messing with her a little bit. Oh, yeah. Her name is Gemma. She's a beauty. Gemma's a great snake. Super docile. This is about an 18-foot reticulated python known as a, a ghost phase. It's really good. It's that girth. I know. Girth and and really she'll eventually get a lot bigger. We keep them, we like to keep them, I'd like to call it lean and mean, right? Yeah. I don't want fat snakes because fat snakes don't live a long time. No. Nice, mean, you know, feeding these snakes the proper amount to keep them where they're healthy but not obese is what's going to make them live 30, 40 years. You get a be obese reticulated python and you're looking at 10, 12, maybe 15 years if you're lucky. So you definitely make that mistake from time to time. But but thankfully, we've always kept them pretty lean and mean. Of course, another uh, beautiful, big, giant snake, eventually gonna get 18 plus foot, is my albino Burmese python named Sunrise. Oh, she's absolutely gorgeous. This she's thing. amazing, and she's such a sweetheart. You know, such a good snake. And the thing with working with these big snakes, it's nothing like working with our big snakes in Australia. Yeah. Basically, what I've learned very quickly is they're big, they're heavy, they're powerful animals, but more importantly, Wherever you point this thing, the rest of the body will follow. Yeah, yeah. and that's one of the main yeah. critical things. Yeah, it's it's true. It's it's very true, and they're easy to handle. You know, I mean, they're big, big, lumpy snakes. They don't fly around on you. They don't go crazy. Particularly the pythons, every now and then, will get a little bit you know wild and and, and crazy. But uh, then we have, uh, of course, my biggest particularly python is Lucy. She's actually uh, 20 foot two inches. Woo. And she's due for a feed here pretty soon, so maybe we'll get a chance to get you tomorrow, feed her up, maybe. And that might be cool. And then uh, lastly, we just have a couple of things. We have uh, our alligator tapping turtle here. She's actually roaring right now. Oh, yeah. That's a beast. This is Bowser. Look at that guy. Woo. There you go, buddy. Beautiful animal, I love this guy to death. Such cool animal, you know, 40 something, about 43 years old, gonna live 200 years. <laughs> then of course we have Connie in here with the tortoises, doing a little tortoise maintenance here, feeding, mm -hmm. stuff like that. We've got leopard tortoises down here and then our big Aldalbra tortoise on the end. These leopard tortoises are in their mid 20s. And of course, uh, Matilda's only 17, so she's the baby of the bunch. She's 160 pounds now, she'll get up to 500 pounds. So it's just amazing to see these guys. Beautiful animals, loving to death. And, uh, and that is the tour of the Reptarium. Man, that is a premium tour, I tell you what. I'm so grateful to be here and have Brian as a good friend, I tell you. I appreciate you, brother. It's great having you here, too. I've been wanting to show this off to you for so long, man, seriously. I've been so envious watching it from a distance, but I've been so fortunate now to get here and see it, and I feel so, so lucky. I really appreciate it, man. Brother, you're always welcome, man. <laughs> Well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's show. Make sure you hit me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And make sure you give the show a like. Until next time, thanks for watching.